will demonstrate how to work with transformations of exponential functions. And if you take a look at the first two equations, y equals 3 to the x and y equals negative 3 to the x, the difference between the second and first is the first has been multiplied by negative 1, hence the negative right here in front of the 3 to the x. And what that does graphically is it reflects the graph in the x-axis. And so y equals 3 to the x and y equals negative 3 to the x are reflections of each other in the x-axis. In the example in the bottom part of the page, y equals 2 to the x and y equals 2 to the x plus 4, notice that the 2 to the x plus 4 graph has been raised 4 units from the original y equals 2 to the x graph. For example, the 2 to the x graph goes through at 1 here, so the 2 to the x plus 4 graph goes through at 4 higher, or at 5 would be the y-intercept. It looks like they're getting closer together over here, but that's just because of the shape of the graph. There's still a vertical distance of 4 units straight up here between the graphs at any point. So y equals 2 to the x plus 4 has been moved up 4 units from the y equals 2 to the x graph. Now we turn over to page 2. Uh, we're going to talk about here a little bit about how in general all the different transformations affect the original graph. If you remember from previous study, y equals f of x is uh, usually called our original function, our parent function. And so uh, multi multiplying the function by an a, and, and hence this uh, a right here, and the k, and the d, and the c, they all have meanings. And remember that a was the vertical stretch or compression, and k was the horizontal stretch or compression. Uh, d here, depending upon the sign, moved the graph horizontally left or right. And the c on the end was the constant that moved it up or down, so that was the vertical translation to c on the end here. And so the same thing is true with exponential functions. The a that's multiplied by the b to the x is the vertical stretch or compression depending upon the, the size of a. The k is multiplied by x, so it's a horizontal stretch or compression depending upon the size of the k. The d is a horizontal translation depending upon the size of d, whether it's positive or negative. And the c is a vertical translation. And so it's the same transformations as in previous study. And we're going to use these on pages 3 and 4 to graph uh, four different examples of exponential functions. And uh, if we take y equals 2 to the x plus 3, that's a here. This is the original y equals 2 to the x graph. And so the plus 3, that's a horizontal translation, three units left. And so... If we take this graph and move it left 3, and so for example, this point right here has been moved left 3, so that would move to there. Uh, this point right here at 2, 4 would move again left 3. Uh, the y-intercept at 1 would again move left 3, and if you do that for several points and then join them together, remember the horizontal asymptote is still the x-axis because it's just shifted left 3. So do that for several points and then join them with a smooth exponential curve and that's what y equals 2 to the power of x plus 3 would look like. Now when there's only one translation or transformation it's often easy just to move the points or, or transform them however they're transformed. If there's more than one transformation it's a good idea to work with a table instead and that's what we'll do for question B here. Now in question B, remember the negative means that the graph has been reflected in the x-axis. The 2 means that it's stretched vertically so it's steeper. The negative 1 means it's been moved down so that horizontal asymptote has been moved down 1. It's no longer on the x-axis. It would be at y equals negative 1 instead of y equals 0. And the plus 3 means the graph has been translated three units to the left. Now I've taken five ordered pairs on the original y equals 2 to the x function here, and we're going to apply all these transformations to them. Uh, it's, it's helpful if you consider what affects x and then what affects y. So first of all, reflecting in the x-axis, that affects y. Uh, stretching the, the graph vertically affects y. And the translated one unit down affects y. So the only thing that affects the x's is the translated three units left. So translating three units left would mean I would subtract three from all the x's. So each, in each case here, we're going to subtract three from each of the x's.
So we'll start with the very first x value, which of course is uh, negative 2. And if we subtract 3 from it and move it 3 left, we would move it to negative 5. Now the y's. So the y's are multiplied by negative 2. That's the reflection, the x-axis, and the vertical stretch. And then they're moved 1 down. So that's what those three transformations do to the y. Multiply y by negative 2 and then subtract 1. So if I take a quarter and multiply it by negative 2, that would be negative a half. And then if I move it down 1, that would be at negative 1 and a half or negative 1.5. And so that's the point negative 5, negative 1.5. And then we'll take the negative 1, and remember the x's, we are moving at left 3, so we'll subtract 3 from negative 1 to make negative 4. And then we'll take this y, multiply it by negative 2, and then move it down 1. So multiplying that by negative 2 would mean it'd be negative 1, and then we subtract 1, so the new y value here should be negative 2. And so we'll plot the point negative 4, negative 2. And then, again, uh, the x-coordinate 0, we'll move it left 3. So left 3 means it's going to move to negative 3. And then we'll multiply the y-value by negative 2, which is negative 2, and take 1 off that, so it'll be negative 3. And so we'll plot negative 3, negative 3. The uh, one y x coordinate here, we'll subtract 3 from that, so it'll become negative 2. And then multiplying this y by negative 2, that makes negative 4. Subtracting 1 gives us a y coordinate of negative 5, and we'll plot negative 2, negative 5. And then uh, 2 subtract 3 is negative 1, and the 4 will multiply by negative 2, that's negative 8. And then subtracting the 1 means makes it negative 9, and so we'll plot negative 1, negative 9. And we'll join them with a smooth curve. So that's what y equals negative 2 times 2 to the x plus 3 minus 1 would look like.